club started up, and this club was based on microprocessors. And I didn't know anything about them at first. I'd been working at Hewlett Packard on calculators for years. And this little microprocessor is like the little guts of a computer, one chip. I've already got the machine that displays words from a computer on the screen and a keyboard that types to a computer. Why don't I make this little microprocessor chip my own local computer? and a little bit of memory to make it work, and the right kind of memory, dynamic memory. But as a good designer, I always believed in few parts, and it was the cheapest memory that saved the parts that was going to replace other types of magnetic memory. So made a lot of right decisions and built this. I designed this machine. A microprocessor, Intel 400 bucks, Motorola 40 bucks. A new one came out for 20 bucks. I bought the $20 one. That's all I could afford. But it was really the hottest microprocessor in my mind of the day, the best, tech, best technology, the best performance, the best specs. Built this little machine up, and I said, I don't want the big front panel. I've been there. Five years ago, I built a computer with one of these front panels with switches that you toggle and lights and buttons. I don't want that. That cost, you know, I don't like metal and hardware. I don't like to drill the holes and mount these big switches inside and run wires down to other chips, and those chips have to touch to my computer. No, that's just too many parts, too much expense. I said, look at our calculators at Hewlett Packard. You have a little machine, and inside we had a processor. Took two chips back then, because we didn't have very many transistors on a chip a little processor that said what key is being pressed. And when you press the 5 button, it says, aha, the 5 button got pressed. And it goes off and it puts a 5 in the display. And then comes back and says, what key is being pressed now? I said, what if I write a little program, a little tiny program, 256 bytes long, that lets you type on a human keyboard, and it says what key is being pressed. And when you press a key, it responds to it and stores it up. And maybe you type in a line and a return, and it tries to figure out what you told the computer to do, and it does it. So I said, I'll just write this program, and now I'll have my terminal to type on. I'll have a keyboard. It'll look like a typewriter. I was a real good typist then. Uh, it looked like a typewriter. I just type on a keyboard, and I watch it on my home TV set. And so I wrote that little program, got it working one night, and it was just, you know, this is unbelievable. This is my lifetime dream. I told my dad I'd have a computer someday. Now I had it. I could write programs forever. Instantly, it popped in my head. Bill Gates had written a basic for some other types of computers, and I said, I'm going to write a basic. I've never studied the language. I've never used it. I've never taken a class in writing languages. But I sat down. That was a much harder project than any of my hardware projects at Apple ever. It took me about four months to write this basic. And when I look back on some of my time schedules, maybe even longer, write this basic that you could type in a simple program. A fifth grader can type in a basic program and get a computer to run things and count some numbers or whatever. And um, but once that was done, Steve Jobs, I was, getting, I was giving away the schematics passing them out, no copyright notices, no nothing, passing out the listings of the code I wrote to other people in my club. I was saying, here, you can build your own. And nobody really had the time to build it. And so Steve Jobs came by and said, why don't we make a PC board to save them the time to build it? A PC board is a board with all these little silver traces on it, and you plug the chips in, which is presumably the people could get for free from their companies or whatever, solder them, and it's done in a couple of hours. And he said, we'll build a PC board for $20, the blank PC board, and we'll sell it for $40. And, you know, we thought about how much money it would cost. We'd probably have to sell 50 of them to make, get our money back. And I didn't think we'd sell that many. And Steve said, yeah, but for once in our lives, we'll have a company of our own. Well, who could turn that down when you're young? If you don't have to justify it, you know, in some business sense. But you'll have your own company. And, uh, he, and he was always anxious to sell things. He got, got me selling my terminal in earlier days and Blue Box. So, um, so here we were. Okay, I said, yeah. And then he, um, one day I picked him up uh, at the airport coming back from Oregon. And on the, Highway 85, he said, I got a great name for the company, Apple Computer. First thing I said is, what about Apple Records? He says, well, that's a record company. We're a computer company. So we went with Apple Computer. And it was so neat because all of the little entertaining, the fun, the humorous type of aspects that came into our, com our company. Well, the Apple One was a quick project to basically take an existing keyboard typing terminal with my home TV add a little microprocessor, and it's a fully usable, you can actually program, put programs into it. But it was a, a quick hack job, a pick combin combining two different con concepts at once, the microprocessor with the terminal. Um, that was the Apple I. The Apple II was really the machine that was going to change the world. I sat down, and I said, I'll finally design a computer of my own. Right from the beginning, I designed it around color television signals and built up from that and had it control all the registers and the microprocessors and the memory and everything. And I came up with idea after idea after idea that cut the chips in half, and yet for the first time, nobody would ever believe color would be in a computer. Why do you think we picked a six-color logo to start the company? Um, nobody believed that with graphics, where you can just 
turn on individual dots on the screen or high resolution graphics. We put paddles and sounds in. And we had a system you could program, a fifth grader in basic could program animated games. So that was the Apple II and that was the computer took over the world.